Hey lovelies, ready or not, the holidays are just around the corner. And in my house at least, that means a whole lot of entertaining. Today I wanna share three delicious appetizers that you can whip up in absolutely no time to make your entertaining a little easier. They're my incredible puff pastry pinwheels and today I'm going to show you three festive flavor twists that I know you guys are going to love. So for each of these pinwheels, I'm going to be using one of my very favorite supermarket shortcut ingredients, puff pastry dough. Now you can usually find it in the freezer section at your supermarket. I like to let mine thaw in the refrigerator overnight and then I usually like to take it out 15 to 20 minutes before I'm going to use it to get it a little pliable, especially for these because we're going to be sort of rolling them up. It's important to make sure that your puff pastry is pliable. So I have a full rectangle of puff pastry dough on my board. I've got a little bit of flour down to prevent it from sticking. And for my first pinwheels, I am keeping it really simple. These are some ham and Swiss pinwheels. We're gonna start by getting down a layer of Dijon mustard all over our pastry. And we're just gonna spread it into a nice thin layer. Want a little bit of Dijon flavor in every single bite. Now, if you are not a mustard lover, go ahead and skip this step. I am a big fan, especially when it comes to ham and Swiss. Mustard is an absolute essential. I have some Black Forest ham here. I asked my deli to cut it really, really thin. It just makes this easier to sort of roll up. And I'm going to get down one layer of ham across all of my puff pastry. Once our ham is down, we can go ahead and add our Swiss. I wanna make sure there's lots of Swiss cheese in every bite, so I'm gonna try to get it as close as possible. Again, if you want better coverage, go ahead and use some shredded cheese. That will definitely work too. Then the real secret to creating our pinwheel shape is the process of rolling these up. You're gonna start from one side and then gently roll away from you. This is when it's really important that your board be nice and floured on the underside. It's just gonna help make this a little easier. So you'll see, this is rolling nice and tight. Basically what I wanna do is finish my roll with this seam side down, and the mustard is actually going to help it really adhere. Now to cut these up, I always recommend using a sharp serrated bread knife as opposed to a regular knife. A regular knife will sometimes just squish them down and it gets them a little misshapen. I'm going to cut these maybe three quarters of an inch or so. I find that's the sweet spot so you get a nice big bite, but it's not too, too thick once it puffs up. Then it's just a matter of transferring each of our rolls to a parchment lined baking sheet. Just before these head into the oven, I wanna give them a nice brush of egg wash. Now, if you're not familiar with egg wash, it's just an egg that's been beaten. I always add a tablespoon or two of water to thin it out a little bit, and then I just apply it with a pastry brush. You wanna make sure you're applying it on both the top and the sides. The egg wash helps give you a really golden color and a nice crisp crust. I'm gonna get these beauties in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, for between say 17 and 20 minutes, you wanna keep a good eye on them. And as soon as they're golden and that cheese is nice and bubbly, they are ready to be served. Guys, seriously, how easy were these to make? But your guests will absolutely devour them, guaranteed. Now, for a fun vegetarian version of these pinwheels, I'm actually making an herb goat cheese and olive version. So we're starting with some room temperature goat cheese. Really important to have your goat cheese at room temperature here because we're going to be spreading it on our puff pastry dough. And if it's too cold, it'll start to tear and that's not what you're going for. Now, to get some delicious garlic flavor happening in this goat cheese, I'm actually going to be grating some fresh garlic right into it. You could add some garlic powder if you wanted to instead, but of course there's nothing that beats fresh garlic. Then it's time for our fresh herbs, which are really going to make this extra delicious. So I've got a combination of some freshly chopped parsley, some basil, as well as some freshly chopped rosemary. Really, really seasonal flavors. And of course, rosemary and olives are a classic flavor combination. I'm just going to use a fork to get this well combined, and then I'm just going to spread it out all over my puff pastry dough. I wanna get down a nice even layer and I find doing it with a fork really, really makes it easy. Next, I'm going to pile on my olives. So I'm using some Kalamata olives that I finely chopped. You could pulse them in your food processor quickly if you wanted to or just do this by hand, no problem at all. Once I've got all of my olives down, I'm gonna finish this off by sprinkling on some red pepper flakes for just a little bit of kick. Of course, you can skip this step if you want to. And as you can see, I have left one inch of pastry exposed at the very bottom. I'm just going to brush on a little bit of egg wash there. That's going to help my seam adhere so these don't sort of open during the cooking process. Next, it's just a matter of rolling my pinwheels up. Once again, I'm just going to roll away from me until I get to the very end. 
Then I'm going to cut these with my sharp serrated knife and get them onto my baking sheet. Then we're gonna get our egg wash happening here. It's gonna give these that great golden color. Into the oven they go, 400 degrees Fahrenheit until they are nice and golden brown. Guys, what is not to love? These are crispy, crunchy, earthy, savory, and super seasonal. Irresistible, as far as I'm concerned. Now my final pinwheels today are definitely the ones that I am most excited about. These are French dip pinwheels. Now if you're not familiar with French dip, it's this really delicious roast beef sandwich with caramelized onions, and you basically dip it into this incredibly flavorful beef broth jus. So we are going to be mixing all of those flavors into some pinwheels. Trust me, it's gonna be good. But it all starts by caramelizing some onions, which I admit can be a bit of a labor of love, but it's always worthwhile. I'm starting with my cast iron skillet on the stove. You can do this with any kind of skillet you want. And I'm just going to get some butter melting down. As soon as that butter is nice and melted, I am going to get my thinly sliced onions into the skillet. Once those onions have hit the pan, I'm going to go ahead and season them liberally with some salt. Now I know this is going to feel like a lot of onions at first, but they really do tend to shrink down in the cooking process. These are going to be cooking up for between say 20 and 25 minutes until they're really, really dark and delicious. The thing about caramelized onions is the longer they cook, the sweeter they become, and they take on so much amazing flavor. Magic has happened. You see my onions have almost melted. They're so beautifully caramelized. We're gonna add a couple more ingredients to just take the flavor of these over the top. I've got some Worcestershire sauce. That is headed in here. It's nice and savory. It's got a really meaty flavor. And I've also got some fresh thyme. Both of these are optional, but they really take your caramelized onions to the next level. We'll maybe let these go another minute or two, and then we can get to work on building our pinwheels. So once again, I've got my puff pastry laid out on my board, and I'm just going to cover the entire surface of it with some very thinly sliced roast beef. Next, I'm going to be topping that with some cheese. In this case, I'm using some provolone cheese. You could swap in some Swiss here, or even some shredded white cheddar cheese would be really good in these. But of course, provolone is classic and it's a really great melting cheese. Finally, I'm going to be piling on all of those tasty caramelized onions. And then it's just a matter of getting these rolled, sliced, arranged on my baking sheet, and then into the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until they are nice and golden. In the meantime, while those are baking away, we are going to prepare our really delicious dipping sauce for these. It all starts again with a little butter in my skillet. Once our butter is amply melted, we can go ahead and add our garlic into the pan. I've got one clove here. You wanna go with two cloves? You know I would never judge you. I'm just gonna let that clove of garlic get all hot and buttered. Get it hot and bothered? Hot and buttered up in this pan. And as soon as you can smell that delicious garlic, it is time to add your beef broth. Of course, good quality beef broth is the secret to a really good jus. Once that beef broth reaches a simmer, we are going to pile in even more great flavor. So I have got some Worcestershire sauce, Dijon mustard, and some fresh thyme leaves headed in here. I'll give that a good stir, and after just a minute or two, this stuff is ready to be served up with those yummy pinwheels. Perfect for dipping. I cannot stress to you guys enough how amazing these are. I highly recommend making a double or triple batch because your guests are going to devour them at an alarming rate. Don't believe me? Try them for yourselves. If you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because you guys know how much I love seeing your kitchen creations. Keep in mind, all these delicious recipes are linked in the description box below, so you can find them there. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.